So in this video we're going to be talking about something that's kind of strange and it took me um, a while to actually fully understand. Well I say fully, I don't mean that, I mean to actually kind of understand because this is a strange article. Um, so coronavirus, majority testing positive have no symptoms. So what I'm saying is the majority who have tested, who have tested positive for COVID-19 um, are asymptomatic and these are from tests probably drive through centers and places like that where it's called uh, pillar 2 testing so it's normally testing in the community so only 22% uh, percent of people tested positive for coronavirus reported having symptoms on the day of their test so it's a very weird headline and a very weird um, thing so um, you know this hammers home it's just it's just bizarre to be honest and the more I read it the more confused I get by what's the point of this article so only 22% of people testing positive for coronavirus reported having symptoms on the day of their test. So what what's that? About a quarter? No, not even that. A fifth of people who have tested for um who were tested for coronavirus um reported having symptoms on the day of their test. So so what 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 does that what does that mean? So the people who are being tested, only only 22% of them have had symptoms on the day of their test. So this hammers home the role of people who aren't um aware that they're carrying the virus. Um, and spreading onwards I guess it makes the point that like it takes a few days for it to kick in maybe I don't I don't I don't know it's, it's just it's just very uh, strange it's just very strange the wording and everything used in this article absolute confusion here if you can figure this one out let me know but we'll, we'll try and go ahead so health and um, obviously health and social care staff appear to be the most likely to test positive it's probably because they're going around a lot more doing a lot more things um, between the end of March and June, there were 59,000 more deaths than the five um, average per year because obviously the pandemic. Meanwhile, the UK daily figures released on Tuesday show that another um, 155 people have died after testing positive for the virus. This brings our total uh, to 44,391 in this article from the 7th of uh, June, which will go out on the 18th of sorry, wait, 7th of July. This will go out on the 18th of July, hopefully. Um, and so it's just a very bizarre uh, situation. Um, so the ONS survey, while the ONS survey um, includes relatively small numbers of positive uh, swab tests, 120 infections in all, making it hard to make any strong conclusions about who is the most likely to be infected, there are some strong patterns coming through the data. So those in those in people facing health or social care roles and working outside their home in general will like to test positive. Duh. You know, the more, more outside, the more you interact with people, the more likely you are to, t to test positive, especially when... Um, uh, people aren't wearing protective equipment. People from ethnic backgrounds were more likely to have a positive um, antibody test suggesting a past infection. That's quite interesting. So that would be more to do with, you know, the way they've interacted with people, um, you know, the jobs that they have and how well they adhere to lockdown rules. White people were the least likely proportionally to test for positive, uh, positive for antibodies. Also, it could mean that um, because we don't know how long the antibodies actually last for. So it could be the fact that, um, you know, that um, people from um, ethnic minorities were um, tested more recently or perhaps they keep the antibodies longer. I, d I don't know. More more tests were to be done on that one. There are also some evidence that people in larger households were more likely to test positive than those in small houses. Again, another der point. Although men are more likely to die from the coronavirus than women, the study did not find evidence, did not find a difference um, in how likely they were to contract the infection. So that's another interesting point. Uh, men more likely to die um, than women. So um, infection rates similar across um, the genders. So percentage of people in the community testing positive. So um, you see 0.3% of, no, be 0.3.3% of women and about 0.3% of men. And you've got the margin of error there. Um, the figures are based on tests um, selected at random in homes in England. People living in care homes and other institutions are not included in this study. Um, and so, well, the point of this article is to say about like, how dangerous the asymptomatic spread is. So, on Monday, the Prime Minister talked about how asymptomatic spread may have contributed to more coronavirus um, cases in care homes. So, he's really trying to cover himself here because of the failure of the government. His comments provoked anger. Um, that's something I should have covered, but I failed to, where he talked about, you know, um, it's the care home's fault for not following procedures. But then he never actually specified what the procedures were that they didn't commit, because if they didn't follow these procedures, that means they're probably culpable um, legally. So these care homes can get sued. So pre please, Prime Minister, tell us. Tell us what these procedures were, and uh, we'll see what happens. If not, then shut your mouth, because you're probably talking nonsense as usual. Um, later, his business secretary, Alam Sharma, said he meant nobody at the time knew what the correct procedures were. So... Here you've got the cleanup man here sent in Alok Sharma because he's saying they didn't follow the procedures. No one at the time knew what the procedures were. So how can they fail to follow procedures if no one knew what the procedures were? Absolute idiot, bro. Especially when Matt Hancock sent people who were positive, who had coronavirus into care homes. So uh, Boris, shut up, lad. 
Um, asymptomatic transmission was warned by the World Health Organization and the government scientific advisors, but they weren't able to qualify how great the risk was. So this is something they knew, I think, back in January that um, uh, there were asymptomatic people carrying the illness. But um, as usual, Boris didn't really care because he was on holiday. Uh, while 22% um, in the ONS study reported symptoms on the day, a larger group, a third, 33% of people testing positive for coronavirus reported having symptoms either on the day of the test or at a previous or subsequent test. So the 78% not reporting symptoms on the day of the test includes pre-symptomatic or, uh, people as well as asymptomatic people and um, th those who will never uh, develop noticeable symptoms. Meanwhile, weekly deaths in the UK are slightly below the average for this time of year with 10,267 um, registered in the week of the 20th. 6th of June and lower um, the week uh, before figures show there were 651 registered deaths uh, mentioning COVID. The number registered um, the week uh, lockdown was 607. And so this is just a very confusingly written article. It's not the best article, honestly, because we don't learn a lot from this. What it gives the, is the impression that people being tested are, um, you know, don't show symptoms or are asymptomatic. Well, they are asymptomatic, but it's, it's just very... Um, it's just strange that, you know, you say only 22% of people testing uh, positive for coronavirus reported having symptoms on the day of their test. And that's because they're testing um, specific people, um, people that work in hospitals, uh, care homes, also teachers um, and anyone I think that works in and around a school and um, other places. And so that makes sense if you're just testing people, you know, just to make sure these specific people don't have it, then... Um, you know, they're probably not going to have coronavirus. I know someone who's a teaching assistant, she got tested, she didn't have it. So what this article kind of clumsily gives the impression that, you know, that the majority of people who are carrying this are is asymptomatic, but I don't think that's the case. Uh, purely because, you know, if you keep testing similar groups of people, um, you know, the tests, aren't, the tests are going to be pretty similar, I think. I don't, I don't know, I'm not an expert in this. I, I probably just, you know, rambled on long enough but it's just a very clumsily uh, worded article and um not not rachel um not rachel's best work i think the health reporter for the bbc and um you know look i'm gonna leave it there let me know what you guys think in the comments below like comment share subscribe and hopefully i'll see you in the next one